Well, welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts right off the bat on today's show. Let's talk a little bit about Formula One because Formula One is going to look quite a bit different in the year of 2018. In fact, starting March 25th of 2018, there's going to be a brand new television partner here in the U.S. market. Gone is NBCSN and the NBC family of networks in favor of ESPN, who hasn't shown Formula One here in the United States since the 90s. In fact, their parent company, ABC, was one of the first groups to ever show Formula One in the U.S. market back in 1962. Now, there's some good parts and some bad parts. We'll start with the bad parts, at least as far as I'm concerned. The entire commentary group that we've known and loved that has kind of flopped around from every iteration of Formula One here in the U.S. market will not be returning. The biggest one being David Hobbs, ex-Formula One racer along with sports car racer who's covered racing inside of the U.S. market for over 40 years. In fact, he was with the ESPN group doing Formula One, moved over to Speed Vision, then became Speed Channel, on into NBC and their family of networks. The other one is ex-Formula One mechanic Steve Matchett, who actually joined back in the Speed Vision days through the Speed Channel days up to the NBC days. The other one is their guy on the ground, that's Will Buxton, who I think has done a fantastic job over the past several years. He will not be going over to ESPN as well. The only person who I know exactly what they're going to be doing already made his announcement of what he will be doing is the lead presenter, that being Lee Diffie. Lee Diffie will continue on with NBCSN covering Monster Energy NASCAR and the Verizon IndyCar series along with the Olympic coverage. So it's going to be an interesting move over to this, but some of the good news that ESPN's bringing along is they're going to bring out not only every qualifying event live, every race live, but every practice session as well. We've been enjoying free practice too here in the United States for a long time, but apparently now you're going to be able to see every practice session when it's available on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. There is another little situation that's lurking about, too, a brand new streaming service that could be coming out, where they're calling over the top, that could show every live practice session all the way up through the race itself it will be coming out very soon. So we'll hear more about that coming up in the next several months. But boy, it's going to be a big change, including a huge new commentary group and a new live feed we're going to get to enjoy here in the United States. We'll wait and see how good it may be. Next up on the list, let's talk about the Dodge Demon. I haven't talked about this vehicle in a while, but an interesting little factoid came out just a handful of days ago, brought to us by the folks over at Autoline.tv. Now, a lot of vehicles, when they're being developed inside of a company, they give it a little code name, a little, you know, behind-the-scenes little moniker that they call the vehicle that sometimes ends up being the name of the vehicle once it goes out to live to the public. But in this case, FCA wanted to keep this car kind of on the down low. So they called this thing Benny. As in Benny Hill. Yeah, an interesting little low-key name. They also covered up a lot of information coming off the dynamometer that was actually showing off the engine than when they were doing some testing for this vehicle, making it look a lot more like they were testing the Hellcat engine instead of the massive power that comes from in that brand new Demon engine. So it's an interesting little situation of what companies do, trying to keep a lot of information out of the press, albeit I think a lot of these manufacturers leak out to the press anyway about what they have in future plans. Next up on the list, got a brand new off-roader from the folks over at Versvante. And we remember talking about these guys having a lineup of those beast supercars we've talked about in the past. Well, now they got a brand new off-roader, the Versvante Tank. And this thing is a tank. In fact, the entire bodywork is all done up in ballistic armor using Kevlar. Kevlar like the bulletproof vest material. Not only is the bodywork done all up in Kevlar, but there's a lot of it done up underneath to protect vital parts, including the fuel cell. All the side windows are supposedly bulletproof, along with the tires themselves that are military-grade run-flak technology. Then probably one of the weirder things, this thing has thermal night vision to go along with all its crazy goodness. Now, if you look really close, you're going to get to see the underpinnings of this car because this is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon underneath. 
The live front and rear axles come right off the Rubicon, along with, you look at the windshield and a lot of other, the interior pieces as well, that screams Jeep on the inside of it. But gone is that normally aspirated Pentastar V6 in favor of a normally aspirated 6.4. Hemi V8, like right out of the SRTs, making now 500 horsepower and 430 pounds-feet of torque. Shift through an automatic transmission. Obviously, the vehicle is all-wheel drive. Rosanti has not come out yet and announced when this vehicle will be getting into your grubby little mitts if you'd like to own one of these, but they have announced the price. Starting price for this machine is just a touch under $180,000. Last up on the list, this is a weird little story, this announcement coming out from the National Hot Rod Association, actually the day before the taping of this program, that's going to send some shockwaves through the NHRA community, basing all around Pro Stock and the Pro Stock competitors, along with the drivers and owners as well. In fact, my father and I were discussing the current state of Pro Stock inside of the NHRA when we were at the last NHRA stop talking about if the NHRA would continue to live on I kind of thought it would just for the sheer fact that well number one it's been around as long as I can ever remember but the bigger thing is is the fields have been pretty full even over the past several years even through the economic downturn they've had pretty full fields in fact the 16 car fields maybe only been cut down by one or two cars for only maybe a handful of events during the year well, that letter that went out to all the NHRA competitors, especially in Pro Stock, Pro Stock uh, competitors as, as a whole, read out to be something that may be the start of the final nails in the coffin that is Pro Stock. The claim in the letter is that Pro Stock has been falling in favor with the fans, even though with increased television packages and big changes to the automobiles, gone are the carburetors and hood scoops in favor of fuel injection, Shorter wheelie bars in the back. They were hoping to get to see a lot bigger wheel stands out of these cars to bring up some excitement for the fans. But they are now talking to dropping from a 16-car field down to an 8-car field in nine events starting in 2018. Those are the events in Houston, Texas, Topeka, Kansas, Epping, New Hampshire, English Town, New Jersey, which is a bizarre one to me because E Town is a hotbed for Pro Stock and Pro Stock fans. They love Pro Stock in English Town. I can't believe they're going to drop this field down to just eight cars. Bristol, Tennessee, Denver, Colorado, Sonoma, California, and Seattle, Washington, and Brainerd, Minnesota will be all the events will just be down to an eight car field. This is a weird little situation, a slippery slope from a lot of hardcore NHRA fans and a lot of hardcore pro stalkers that have been flying through this tough times over the past several years because these cars are insanely expensive to actually operate. I don't think NHRA is going in the right direction by just limiting the field. They really need to do something to cut costs on the vehicles themselves, but... Apparently their popularity means that they can just drop this field, maybe altogether. We may see a year where pro stock is no longer a professional category in the National Hot Rod Association. We'll definitely keep you in tune if we hear any more about this, especially the ripples that are going to be hitting the sport when this sport ends up in NS Texas for the Texas Motorplex Nationals that will be coming up just in a couple of weeks' time. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. Links down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. The first dibs in the brand new show as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.